Hi everyone, I'm Carrie Cassidy from Project Camelot and we're going to start soon. Uh, we just had some glitchy things happen with the Skype, so I'll um, be right back and stand by. Okay, hi, I'm Carrie Cassidy from Project Camelot and uh, very happy to be here today. We've been having some interesting logistical issues with Skype and everything else acting up. So uh, welcome Ben to my show and uh, Ben is a remote viewer and we're going to be talking about cryptos and Ben's remote viewing visions of the future. And Ben, uh, say hello to everyone. Hello to everyone. Carrie, thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it. I think uh, I think there's some interesting stuff going to take place regarding cryptos, future events, and kind of where we are, this whole virus and moving forward. I'm okay. <laughs> excited to kind of work based on these topics. Excellent. And uh, before we launch into all of that, can you give people who might not have seen our prior interview uh, something of an introduction uh, as to who you are and how you got where you are today? Um, well, no, I can't. If they don't know who I am, then they need to go online and look it up. Are you serious? I'm serious. Uh, well, it's, it's a courtesy. So, uh, why don't you tell, uh, us some, uh, at least a short bullet point. I don't even know where to begin. Well, to be honest, I mean, Terry. okay. Uh, You've been remote viewing for how long? We'll do this step by I don't step. Know if you call it remote viewing. I've gone back and I've done some homework based off the last video we done to this one. Uh, you'd asked before how I get the things that I get. Uh, I've born with this problem. I can't shut it off if I wanted to. Uh, I don't know if you call it remote viewing. As you mentioned the precog yes. prior. I, I've never heard of that. I haven't looked into it a whole lot. Uh, a lot of names that are out there in, in the remote viewing world, what, all 12? <laughs> it's not a whole lot of people that do do it. Uh, and if you got it, something to take notice of. Um, I dream about every night I go to sleep, or if I do go to sleep, the times I do, uh, I have a whole group of different timelines that take place uh, unconsciously. And as I live my normal, regular life, no matter what I'm doing, um, throughout the day, uh, I'll get flashbacks of first four main topics that I'm exceptionally good with. It's cryptocurrency, money, uh, future technology, space, and anything involving my family. It's something that may come up where we're going to be put into a, a bad position. Uh, I'll typically get a deja vu of that. It's, there's two main things that I'll always see is something that's a life-changing event because you typically don't forget the things that are life-changing. Uh, the things that may hurt my family or things that, uh, for instance, we were driving down the road the other day and uh, I, I said to my friend's car, I said, don't turn left. And I said, why? I said, there's glass down there down the street. You're going to pop your tire. And so we turned right. But on the way back, we went back and just wanted to check and see. And there's a bunch of glass and there was a couple of nails in the road. So it was a good idea. We didn't. Uh, and just sort of little stuff like that along the way, what I'm naturally going to do on my own. Uh, I just, whatever I'm infatuated with, that's what I dream about. And those are the topics that I, I'm pretty good at covering. If we get outside of those topics, uh, it's, it, it's, gets a little shaky. So, uh, the remote viewing aspect, there's maybe I'll get two out of 10 things. There's a lot of other remote viewers out there a whole lot better than I am. Uh, and that's, that's not the, uh, area that I, I really focus a whole lot on. Can I remote view? Yeah, but I suck at it, being honest. Uh, if we do something called, I guess it's called front loading, then I can get all kinds of information about it. I've never seen and never heard about it. I've never, never looked at, uh, not consciously at least, and un, un, what do you say? Un, unawaring, <laughs> un, have this unawareness. Uh, and when I hear something about those topics, I'll just, and we'll t we'll document it and timestamp it and we'll wait and sure enough in the future a lot of times i can give an accuracy I, I didn't used to be able to do that it's taken a lot of time and focusing on on what this is and and how i'm doing it to be able to get so if i see something i can typically say okay well it's is it is it somewhere on the timeline because all these different deja vus that i'll get 
if we know something happens two weeks from now and it's a hit, then it kind of gives me an idea of where we are moving forward in conjunction with other stuff that I might get. So it, and it helps to target specific key areas that may or may not take place. Uh, and, and so that's a kind of an idea of, of what I what I do. Uh, cryptocurrency is a, a big passion. I got involved several years. I worked several years ago. I got uh, involved with a cryptocurrency company called NIM. I worked for them for a while. I went around the state of Florida and held events for the uh, NIM.io. Uh, I joined a group called Hedera Hashgraph as an ambassador. Uh, been with them for about the last eight months. And occasionally we'll do little little snippets of information. We'll go around and do events. If I happen to be somewhere where they're already doing an event, I'll see if I can uh, talk about the uh, project. And, and we do. And then we have a private group on Patreon. Uh, a couple friends of mine, I used to have a company and I'm not great with running business. So I, I stepped out of that. But I had somebody that was uh, interested in kind of bringing a company together with a couple people that could help. Uh, teamwork makes the dream work, so to speak. Uh, the areas that I'm not good and they're strong help to uh, help put out information and document some of the information that's coming in in a better way than I could do it on my own because I'm not I'm not I don't think there's a, such a thing as a self-made man unless you're very lucky it really it, it all takes teamwork um, okay so. well that's that's a great beginning and thank you for that uh, I think that gives people a, a look at you and since you don't now refer to yourself so much as a remote viewer but you i think it's you do remote viewing you're also psychic and have other qualities uh that you know of, of beyond the six century six uh you know modes of perception or whatever uh or that people have but uh you also as a remote viewer are you just use a different style than the typical but that doesn't mean you're not a remote viewer if you can catch that. So I think that based on everything that I've known about you and heard from you in the you know, probably in the last, I don't know, six months to a year since I connected with you, I, I think you could definitely say that you are a remote viewer. <laughs> now, um, you're also possibly, uh, sounds like as far as I can see, a precog. And so this is where you get your future downloads and uh, so on. And, and there's very tech, various techniques, I guess, you use to do that, as you say. Uh, so with that in mind, now, when did you want to talk about this, this paper um, that you sent me called Six Coins to Six Million Dollars? Is that, do you want to talk now or do you want to? Yeah, just, just really quick, I guess. So <laughs> last time I was on your show, had a lot of people that, uh, because I like cryptocurrency and I have this ability. And naturally, if you didn't know me or you didn't, you didn't, you didn't know what, what we're about and, or, or the group that we're in, you, you just, you would think that, oh, this guy's just trying to, trying to use his ability to make a lot of money. And, and the truth behind it is when about four or five years ago, I was so flat broke. I didn't know anything about money. I never had a financial education. Uh, it's taken me years of studying. Uh, yeah, Robert Kiyosaki, which is a big one, Jim Rickards, uh, some of the top economists in the world, uh, Jim Roger, and all I do is focus, and that's my hobby, that's what I do, on top of this ability, which I can't shut off if I want to, um, I remember my, I couldn't buy my son a pair of shoes, and that feeling, it, it hurt my heart so bad, and I, I, I thought, well, you know, if I'm going to change the, it, this issue I have of, of being broke, yeah, I never learned about money, and that's not something they ever taught me in school. And they tell you how to balance a, 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 a budget. They tell you how to uh, do some basic accounting needs, but they don't teach. They don't really teach about money. Uh, and it's the, the little green book, The Science of Getting Rich. It's a great, great book, a lot of great stuff in it. Uh, and when I couldn't get my son that pair of shoes, I couldn't even buy him basic I was working 40, 50 hours a week, and no matter how much I worked, it wasn't enough. There, were, there was nothing I could do that that I could I could get ahead at all. And I, I uh, started doing research, and as I was, I found out about uh, cryptocurrency. I, I never really told this part of it, but I was going through my normal YouTube, and there was a guy that popped up that I'd never heard of, I'd never seen before, but you guys will know who he is. His name's Cliff High. And when I saw his face, 
immediately, as soon as I saw his face, I didn't even have to watch his videos. And the, first, the top 20 of what's called the coin market cap, boom, immediately popped into my head. And I saw the Bitcoin symbol, I saw Bitcoin Cash and like I saw all these cryptocurrencies. And that's, that triggered, I go, oh my God. And from what I remembered, that was the future. And it's turning out to be, now we have uh, Congress, uh, Steve Mnuchin this next Tuesday, the Secretary of the Treasury is going before Congress to testify about what he's learned about cryptocurrency in bringing out a digital dollar to the world through the U.S. Treasury, which we actually talked about in your last interview, but now it's kind of coming into play where people can actually see it for themselves. Uh, and so after learning and lo losing a lot of money in the beginning and uh, getting scammed by all kinds of different, they're called ICOs, they're pre-launched companies, they're releasing a coin or a token, and th there was no group, there was nothing to, there was, Nowhere I looked, everybody wanted money. They wanted something where, where I had to pay to, to get in to a lot of the good consultants that really know cryptocurrency that are into it. They charge three to five hundred dollars an hour. And to be honest, I don't think all a lot of them are that great. And I'm not saying I'm anything special, but I uh, really, really bothered me. And I, I thought there's there's thousands and thousands, not just the United States, it's worldwide. China is going live with their digital cryptocurrency, the digital you want going live here just, just in the next 12 months. Uh, Starbucks and McDonald's, these big companies are, are testing it currently, and it's not being talked about in the United States. And Japan has given up their fiat, their cash system, almost all their cash to only use Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, and you guys don't get to hear about it. The news doesn't report on it. Everybody knows they're full of crap. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that anybody in the future that needed help, there was somewhere where they could go to get help they need. So without even charging anybody, you guys come into the group, there's going to be a, uh, a little report that I put together specifically for the people that are watching. Uh, I'm calling it six coins to $6 million. And that's within six years. Uh, most of the United States and the world is going to be into cryptocurrencies and blockchain technologies. Uh, by 2027, I think most of it, maybe 80% of the United States is already going to be on board by 2025. And there's already, there's, well, there's over 600 banks partnered with one cryptocurrency called Ripple XRP. Um, now, Ripple and XRP are a little different, but the, uh, the uh, XRP is where you want to be. And in the report, we give the free link to the uh, public crypto chat if anybody wants to come, if anybody anytime needs help with anything. Well, there is a ton of very intelligent people in there. We keep the room clean. It's neat. There's not a bunch of spam. There's no no trash talk. So they try to be as respectful as possible. There wasn't anything like that when I was around. And that was a big problem for me. So I want to make sure that nobody ever had to go through the stuff that I went through, regardless of if, if, you, if, if we're not charging anything. to. So I'm not saying I have all the time in the world to help everybody, but when I do, I'm there to help. And if I'm not there. There's a ton of other very knowledgeable people. It's kind of like a big family. And that's kind of how I set it up to be with something for the people. Uh, and if we get to know you well enough, then I'll end up making you a, an administrator and you guys run the group. Uh, and and that's uh, that was a big thing. So I guess to, without dragging it out, I, as of today stands, I'm not wealthy and I'm not using it to be greedy. But what I was naturally involved with myself, learning along the way, I thought, well, we might as well bring a few people along the way that can benefit from the stuff that I learned about. And, and uh, even still to today, after four or five years, my son has all the pairs of shoes he needs. So uh, I'm not, not a millionaire, I'm not a billionaire yet, but okay. he's all family's taken care of. Well, good to know. Uh, so I put this on the screen, six coins to six million dollars. Do you want to explain a little bit about that? And that's going to be available as a PDF on my website uh, after this show gets uh, uploaded for members. Uh, so anyone watching can also, uh, where else can they get it besides my website? Because I can't, uh, the way YouTube works, it, there's no way to put the PDF on YouTube. Okay, we'll we'll post it in the uh, public uh, chats through Telegram. Uh, there's no, they're not going to bother you with email. They don't share your information if anybody's worried about that. Uh, or you can you can just download on your phone and get that report and then un, uh, uninstall Telegram. 
uh, that's fine too. Uh, and it'll be pinned in the group, so you won't have to look for it. It'll be at the top of the page. Okay. Um, so, so uh, do you want to explain a little bit about it? I would love to. Uh, there's the six coins. There's there's few people out there that put out little reports from time to time, the top economists. And one of the biggest problems I see with with a lot of the economists that are here today, I, I see them, they're stuck in this mindset of the 80s and 90s and the dot-com bubble and the stocks. And that had its time. It did really well. And a lot of the stocks that are going up today, people see that they're going up but they don't realize that where's that money coming from in order to create more money, they have to, it pulls from somewhere else and everybody that's <laughs> holding dollars or money or any other fiat. When, a, uh, when your central bank prints more money, it devalues the value and the buying power of that money. And a lot of these, uh, cryptocurrencies that are out. I don't think they're going to stand the test of time, but I, I do think that in the top 100 is something to pay attention to, and you can find it on the coinmarketcap.com. Uh, these are six coins that I specifically picked out. Uh, there's some of the economists have thrown stuff out, and it's interesting watching them because they really don't know a whole lot about cryptocurrency, but they have somebody else that they're relying on to make their uh, printed out, typed up report, kind of like Trump reading from a manuscript. He doesn't he doesn't bring that stuff up through his own thoughts. So uh, the stuff that's coming out, it, it, a lot of it's just garbage. I'm not saying all of it is, but nobody's really done their homework. They haven't looked at whether it has a good business model, whether it has a good track record, uh, what it's about, uh, what does it provide. There's two things with all aspects of anything in your life that's always going to uh, be worthy of being on top and it's if it constantly adds value and it always solves problems and if it always can provide those two things then i don't care what industry it is with what it is it's always going to be in 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 the front of the uh, as the leader and so these six coins are most of them are already partnered with big big players one of them is uh v chain which privately partnered with walmart uh, just, uh, I believe it was last year, they've been testing it and building it out and just publicly announced it, uh, uh this last week. Uh, Walmart has launched as a tracking system for all of the goods in, in store, in house. So if anybody that goes to buy a product at Walmart, there may be a QR code on that product. You can simply take your smartphone and scan that and you can literally find out anything and everything about that product from maybe, a. uh, a can of corn, maybe a seed that was planted and how they watered and how they took care of it when it was uh, originally planted, when it matured, when they harvested, when it went on a, uh, the bushel, went onto a pallet, went to a warehouse, they separated it out where it went, when it went. And from inception to the time you purchase it, everything is there. And that's just one aspect of the blockchain. Uh, VeChain and Walmart, Walmart's been here for quite a while. They're a major company. They're not going anywhere. Uh, they're they're putting a, a lot of companies to shame, <laughs> and uh, I, I think it's it's something to pay attention to. Another was Stellar it was originally created by IBM Computer. Uh, they're partnered with uh, Barclays and Citibank, it's two very large banks that people very rarely hear about. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about banking itself, other than Rule 72, but uh, I highly doubt those guys are planning on losing. Uh, you, you just don't have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of banks trying to cre either create their own cryptocurrency or partner with a cryptocurrency to be used as a service to provide to their clients. And that's exactly what's happening. Um, okay, is, so let me ask you a question about this. Uh, how, how does do people, you're giving like six, I, I assume you're telling us which six coins, right? In this report. Correct. And that's your recommendation. Now, as far as how you landed on that recommendation, do you do analysis? I assume you're analysis, doing analysis of the companies and all of that. Are you also relying, again, on your psychic ability and you get a hit somehow, some way with regard to these? And then are you suggesting people buy these coins and sit there, in other words, kind of like as an investment? So. There's a few questions in there. 
hope you so can the first thing I probably should have thrown out is is a little disclaimer that I'm not a financial advisor and can't give financial advice. Uh, cryptocurrencies are extremely high risk and they fluctuate uh, in, a, in a moment's notice like that. Uh, so you never want to invest or put more money into something than you can afford to lose. Um, those uh, cryptocurrencies, what, whatever the topic is, whether it's a, an earthquake hit or it's a, the volcano or the airline flight, uh, airline flight didn't have a whole lot of time, but I'll typically, whatever it is, is and in particular on these cryptocurrencies, I'll do a ton of research and find out everything I can find out about that particular uh, crypto. And once I have all of the information I can get, then I'll try to remote view it and, and look into it uh, and see what, what else I can get outside of the information that was gathered. Uh, if I think when I look at stuff blind, I might get like the outlines of stuff and it'll get close. But when I have the actual information about it, if I want to find out about maybe Stellar is one of the cryptocurrencies, I'll put something, maybe a documentary of Stellar, if <laughs> something to that extent on YouTube. And as I'm falling asleep, listening to that it has nothing to do what's in that actual video. But hearing the word Stellar as I'm in that altered state, start getting stuff. And it just makes it a whole lot easier knowing what the company is about to see who they might be partnered with in the future, even though it may not talk about that in a documentary. And that's, that's yes, a lot of research. And that's typically how we'll get our hits. Okay. And my last part of the question was, do you think people should be investing? In other words, sit there or with the, with the, the crypto once they get it, or do you think that they need to be selling, buying, selling that sort of thing? I, I, I just have a, a, a simple message of where we're going with the, a lot of the cryptocurrencies. If they want to invest, they can invest. Uh, I don't look at it so much as an investment. They were created to be used to replace cash, to replace our current banking and credit system. Uh, a lot of people just don't have time to look into it, to do the research. And, and I think if they did, they would just be completely shocked. There's a uh, Bitcoin documentary done recently by the History Channel, and it's it talks about from 100 years ago where we started, new technologies emerging, and every time a new te technology comes, whoever is the leader at that time gets scared, and they try to shut it down, which is what's been going on for the last several years. You have all the banks that have been just crap talking the cryptocurrencies, and now all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you got politicians and you have JP Morgan's created their own cryptocurrency when he was just saying he'd fire anybody that traded cryptocurrency in his company uh, or Bitcoin and that it's a scam. And then you have Merrill Lynch that just came out with a report said that Bitcoin's the best asset class in the last 10 years that they've ever seen. The same people that were because they, they don't know. They they're just making <laughs> comments about stuff because they're scared. Every time a new technology comes out that may replace something. And the issue is there's no way to shut it down. A lot of these aren't companies. They're, they've been created as a way for if I want to host a server for Bitcoin on my computer, I can do that. And so can hundreds to thousands to millions of other people. So it's not actually a company. There's nobody that's profiting off of Bitcoin other than the people that may come into it could help raise the price uh, over time. But really, when you're looking at these, you got to see think what value does it have and what problems does it solve and when you're looking at those two things you're very easily you don't have to be psychic to to, to know oh my god this is going to replace the system uh but if you don't take the time to look at it you wouldn't know uh, and yes you can invest in them uh you, you can hold them for a long period of time i don't think a lot of people have to i don't think they're gonna have to hold them for more than uh, uh till 2025 to 2027 uh but at that point, by the time it is 2025 and 2027, I highly doubt you'll be able to exit back to cash or the banking system. I think they're all going to be using some sort, it may not be Bitcoin, it may not be uh, Ripple. If they're smart, I think a lot of them will create their own cryptocurrency like the Treasury has been doing. The Federal Reserve announced last year they put together a task force to learn about cryptocurrency because they wanted to end up moving. There's, we're at war right now with China. China is... a there's a speculation I have and something I saw, but we'll find out. 
China and, and some of this virus was uh, COVID was released as a way to uh, make a lot of the countries worldwide go broke, a lot of smaller countries, so that China could end up introducing their digital yuan as a way to bail out all of these smaller countries. And you have the Federal Reserve that if they don't catch up and if they don't get ahead of China very quickly, then the world reserve currency is going to be lost. That's a big deal. Whereas there's hundreds of literally quadrillions of dollars on the table for the future of money and we're behind. So that's a, that's a problem. Okay. Well, that's very good information. Now, uh, in terms of AI, uh, you know, because you can't really divorce cryptos from AI as far as I'm concerned. I don't know how you see it, but I don't know if you've listened to Cyrus Parsa or if you know who he is, but he's giving warnings about China all the time, communist China specifically, and their, uh, their motivations to move the whole world onto uh, being controlled by an AI. And certainly the digital currency is part of that. So how do you, are you aware of that and how do you see that? I am not familiar with that specific person, but I'm pretty familiar with AI. That was a hot topic last time you were, you were huge into the AI. I think uh, like there are a lot of systems and programs that are currently using it. It's not possible to sit in front of the computer with hundreds of people monitoring everything a anymore. Uh, it may have been where we used to be, but without blockchain, which is essentially the cryptocurrencies, AI doesn't exist. There cannot be an AI with, without a blockchain. Uh, and so that's, yeah, that's where, that's where everything's moving. We're, we've been there for a while and a lot of the stuff that's in the government and, and most of the people and the, the viewers on here are going to know that, uh, they're way ahead of where the public is and they slowly, I think to the highest bidder, to the highest corporation, you know, whoever wants to buy out little tidbits of technology and then ends up getting leaked to us over time. Uh, that's kind of where we're at. I think, uh where we've been and where we're going i think we're right on track but you got to pay attention and if you don't you're going to get lost with the the thinking so in the crypto community bitcoin had surged to the uh, nineteen thousand dollars 2017. Uh, people don't realize there is a company called mount gox that came in and mount gox was with a very big bank i'm not going to say the name because i like breathing but uh the uh they always try to fraud when you have that new technology come out and they get scared. They try to fraud what that is. They, so they'll pump money. In, in this case, they'll pump money into it, whether it's a stock or it's a crypto or it's a ETF. They'll try to pump it up and break it and make it not look so good. And the people that come out with real good information, they try to do what? They discredit them. The same thing. Um, and in the process, people just saw that it's rise, rise, rise. They got to get in. People sold their house, their car, and then it dumped. And they thought, oh, my God, Bitcoin's over with. That's that's the end of it. No, because they didn't really know what was going on. They're trying to fraud the system. After they fraud the system, then they'll try to regulate it, which is kind of where we've been for the last six months. We've already had a bill pass in Congress for the Treasury to get started on a cryptocurrency. That was a big one. Something like that hasn't happened since uh, 1912 with the Federal Reserve Act and the six banks coming together to create the Federal Reserve as the Central Bank of the United States. And so well, for the first time... Okay, we'll are you aware that Trump took over the... The, the, the Treasury. Treasury took over the Federal Reserve and Trump's in charge of it now? Are you aware of that? I've never heard that in my life. Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay, so that should also tell you something about the future if, uh, if in fact... Trump is in charge of it, and do you have any idea what their plans are? Because I have heard certain things from my contacts. I think I even might have mentioned this on our last interview. So have you gotten any more information about, you know, how Trump, the Trump administration is approaching all of this? Of course. That's the reason he was put into office is to rebuild the United States as there's two main things he's exceptional at. He's had a TV show for a long time as he's been the king of reality. <laughs> he's a great actor. And you have this, uh, this news and the propaganda and this, uh, it's, they call it bread and circus. This isn't the first time in history it's taken place. It's just different players this time around. Um, Trump is uh, here to not only be the fall guy, but he's here to help rebuild the system. 
as they just talked about recently with a one trillion dollar stimulus package that is going to be rebuilding roads and it's it's just this huge competition with where china is and where we are and we've had all this uh, corruption for so long and the politicians the people taking money and siphoning from places where they really had no business being and it's destroying our country and he's he's one of the good guys that's here but uh I, I, I highly doubt Trump is, is he's one guy. It, 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 he, there's no such thing as a self-made man or a self-made country. It's teamwork. And one guy, unfortunately, just isn't enough to do everything that's needed. But yeah, I think he's trying to do a great job. Uh, well, and I, I mean, I think, he has a yeah. whole team behind him. There's no, yeah. absolutely no doubt about that, including uh, J, JFK Jr. So I'm sure that, you know, money is, is the got to be to some degree the basis of what they're doing. They've got to be looking at the future in that regard. Uh, I'm getting mixed signals from my whistleblowers, though, on how quickly we're moving to the digital sort of currency scene. Uh, I'd like to get your your take on that, where you're at now. Um, are you in the same headspace as where it might start? Uh, in a more substantial way, or do you have new ideas since we last talk, talked about this? Well, I, I keep everybody updated as we, I mean, this is what I do. And people say, well, how do I know you're the best? And Tim comes over to plumb my plumbing under my thing. How do I know you're the best at what you do? Because Tim looks at me and he says, because that's what I do. And so uh, a lot of things that are moving forward, things, like I said, with cryptos can change on the drop of a dime. But as they change, typically within three days to a month, a lot of times we'll get a, get some sort of a hit. I'll get flashed with something. I'll see something uh, regarding whatever it is that I'm into. And like I said, if it's something I'm naturally into, I just pick up on it. I don't even have to try. And it literally just floods in. Um, okay, but what I'm asking you is where you think we're going in terms of the adoption of the digital currency platform. Well, you have the Treasury that's getting ready to release a sec. They want to they want to put out a second round of stimulus for COVID through using a cryptocurrency through the Treasury in a downloadable app. We talked about the last time it's still on on course to happen. Um, like I said, Steve Mnuchin, the secretary of the Treasury, testifies in Congress this next Tuesday. And there's a there's a few people, but he was one of the big names that stuck, stuck out to me. Um, I, I can't imagine we'd it'd be the dumbest. I mean, I don't think they're, they're all that, they don't look that smart from what I can tell, but they'd be really dumb not to move forward with this. Um, I, I think by, uh, the end of 21, hundred percent positive, you're going to see a, a digital currency. I think it's going to be way before that, but just as a worst case scenario. Uh, I think a lot of the central banks we talked about prior to the uh, stable coins, and they're called CBDC, central bank digital currencies. Uh, every single central bank on the planet is privately working on creating a cryptocurrency, and the people don't even know it. Uh, we think we're going to keep using credit and cash. What well, we may, but it's going to be on blockchain behind the scenes. Um, and so it's this there's a big fight for something called staking and there's a push for a cryptocurrency called ethereum which is talk that the banks love it i completely disagree i think that the banks have built some tokens on the ethereum platform because what they're trying to do it your bank account your bank offers a quarter percent annual per year interest right the cryptocurrencies the way they have them set up is they can pay between three percent and some of them pay up to 45 percent and those may be a little more risky for uh, anything over 30 percent but there's some of them that are rock solid with major players behind them they're not going anywhere and have a, a good track record a lot of banks are getting in for that aspect people on wall street and and the uh, fortune 500 companies and the dow they're coming in and what they're i think they've been waiting for is something called ethereum 2.0 I thought it would release sometime around uh, the end of this month based off of something I heard from, from uh, 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 the Ethereum network, but I think they got a long way to go. I think they're going to slam Bitcoin down just here shortly. I think the stock market's actually going to get a gigantic haircut. Uh, it could be as early as this next month, but I think it's right on the doorstep. <clears throat> the Fed just keeps pumping more and more and more money. 
and people just keep seeing their stocks and their portfolio. We're getting richer and richer and richer. And actually, you're getting broker and broker and broker. All they see is money going up. They don't realize that it's devaluing their money. And so last year, a uh, hundred bucks might have filled a whole shopping cart at, at your grocery store. Today, it takes one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars. Why is that? If if the value, if the housing prices, the real estate market is doing so well, why does the prices keep going up? And it's not doing well. It's getting worse. But people don't understand what inflation is. But the cryptocurrencies can be a hedge, especially with a stable coin, as a way to hedge against the dollar. And somebody made a, a really good question. I said, so if a cryptocurrency is pegged, this is what they do. They a stable coin is pegged one for one to the U.S. dollar. If the dollar goes down, does that mean the cryptocurrency goes down? That's a great question. Uh, I don't know. I would think that it should go down, but I highly doubt that it will. I think they're going to, whatever is put in now retains that value permanently. And that's just kind of going to be the way moving forward. I saw at some point Trump, two weeks ago, I saw Trump buying cryptocurrency. Uh, I saw Ivanka, uh, and actually it, it wasn't Trump, but it was his kids were talking him into buying. It's what I saw, uh, and they uh, made an announcement two, three days ago. We got the news article in the group that Trump stands behind cryptocurrencies finally. So that's that's kind of cool. Uh, there's a big competition for who can offer the best interest-bearing rates on these stable coins and so you're going to have a huge fight jim records had a uh, prediction and he's he's not psychic but he's giving predictions robert kiyosaki predictions and most of their stuff is pretty pretty dang accurate jim rogers great guys i love him. uh the uh, jim jim records had talked about uh, currency wars with the fiats and he's 100 percent right and there's this there's a pattern a 10 and 20 year and there's a 100 year and there's there's a 70 year cycle and all these cycles, but and they all keep taking place. Uh, the currency wars are going to expand, not just from fiat, from Asia, the yuan, and Japan, and the Australian, or the, the every different sort of dollar on the planet per each country. It's going to end up expanding into the currency wars from the fiat to the currency wars into the stable coins. That's what we're getting ready to get into right now. And when these guys launch, everybody. Imagine you don't have to get a quarter percent interest per year in your bank account. You can go get 15 percent per year. And to a big company, that's that's pretty impressive. Uh, and that's kind of what's what's getting ready to take place is they're slowly they're starting to get in. I think over the next 14 months on that guy, you're going to end up seeing all of the large institutions coming in out of pure greed. And that's kind of what moves the market and it always has. I think this is going to just push them over the edge. Uh, we're not going to keep using fiat. The Treasury and the Fed and Trump, they're going to they're gonna yank that away. Uh, they may keep it right alongside, they're right along with a, a digital currency for a while, but they'll eventually pull it away. I, I give it maybe six months or less when that crypto is launched. And, but imagine being able to receive your stimulus money for your next round of uh, COVID-19 and another lockdown and a an additional 125,000 bankruptcies. There was an article put out there be 25,000. I saw it be around 120, 120,000 bankruptcies across the United States. Uh, that's coming this year. I think it's coming later, late this fall. And uh, uh, all right. So, so then, if you if you look at the next few months and you're looking at the cryptos, what is mm -hmm. uh, what is your view in in terms of because I know, I know you did mention in, because I'm part of your Telegram group, uh, as you know. So uh, you did talk about a, a food shortage, uh, an escalating food shortage, because food is not really, there is no shortage, at least obvious where I live at the moment in California. Uh, so uh, what are you seeing in the future and why? Okay. Well, uh, from the last one I talked about, in a few weeks, there'll be some food shortages. We actually had, uh, I don't know if you noticed, most grocery stores, including mine, uh, between five different Walmarts trying to find soup. That's the, the entire soup aisle is completely gone. Corn, green beans, a lot of the meats were completely gone. Toilet paper was gone. It's not a food item, but the eggs were completely gone. 
And that's that's just I, I feel like that's just kind of a little test as to what's what's coming because there really is no sort shortages. Uh, you have the grand solar minimum that's here, and scientists have already documented uh, a, a, lot, a couple of them with NASA, but there's a they've documented but in year 2022 and year 2023 specifically uh, at 40 degrees longitude north, so it's 40 degrees north in the northern hemisphere and 40 degrees south in the southern hemisphere. Only mostly around the equator is where you're going to have the largest food production. That's a natural event that's taking place. But you also here have the governments pushing and big corporations pushing to uh, – Trump, I think, is trying to put a little stop to that. So that, that's neat to watch. But it's, I don't think it's going to be enough. You have Tyson. You have Smithfield. I mean, the meat companies are the biggest companies in the United States. They feed the Americans. And they're shutting down meat. They want to end all meat outside of turkey and eggs. <laughs> uh, chickens are gone. They've killed massive amounts and pork and beef. And, you know, it takes a little bit of time. It doesn't happen overnight. Give, give it a little bit of time. I think you're going to have uh, beef surge, skyrocket in price, inflation. Uh, I think people are going to be so concerned with just trying to pay for the, essential, the, the essentials, the, the main staples, that they're not going to have time to really look into anything else. So if you had somebody that that was up on this stuff and think you could get, a, get a, just a couple good things, man, put that extra 50 bucks, put that extra 100 bucks into it now, just let it sit there. If I'm wrong, hey, it's 50 to 100 bucks. But if I'm right, hey, it's a house in 10 years from now. It's, it's a car 10 years from now, whatever it is. If it's not a house and it's only a car, I don't think they're going to be disappointed. Uh, the... Uh, uh, Food issues, by the end of the, the big stuff I know comes in fall of 21, uh, we're right there. We're getting in the big stuff. It's it's just it's it's all part of tied into this economy and how they're playing out. You have that grand solar minimum, but they're also pushing to make the, uh, the supply chains in specific break down. And that's a key piece because the supply chains are what cryptocurrencies solve problems. They not only add the value, they solve the problems there. I also saw that most Americans on your cellular phones are going to be hacked. And there's a push for this. This is how you get people, because the normal people, normal popular, I remember hearing Jim Rickards in interviews, I'm never going to cryptocurrency. I think it's a scam. <laughs> what gives it its value? Well, it takes thousands of dollars of electricity to make it, and it's a lot like gold, but they don't see it. And so they're stuck. And if they are not constantly staying ahead and a couple steps forward, then you just you're gonna get lost. You're gonna get behind, and that's where a lot of crypto community is still stuck in 2017. There's a lot of newer stuff that's better that solves problems. They're not going anywhere for a lot of years, and that's what you need to pay attention to. And that'll be kind of a hedge against this food and this economy and what's what's coming over. To the end of 21, to the middle of 21, I think you're going to have bigger food issues where it's, we're right here where people are starting to notice there is a problem. I went to my grocery store the other day and they're not restocking the shelves. So there's a, what, soda and Coca Cola and candies getting restocked. The, the garbage items are getting restocked, but the real food, the real quality food that we eat that we need to survive, it's not getting restocked. Um, and it's going to take time to run that out. And then eventually the people are going to wake up and they're going to go, this guy's right. Shit, what are we, what are we going to do? My uh, friend of mine works at the uh, uh, Veterans Hospital. And she told me that the uh, uh, they have a food store. It's, it's a big food store. It's probably the small uh, size of a CVS. But they veterans can come. They get a discounted rate on food. And she said, why are the shelves empty? This was just this last week. So why are the shelves empty? I said, well, we've been placing orders, but everything's, they, nothing's coming. And this has been months now, actually, but it's just now starting to hit. That they're not getting any more orders. And the manager said, well, the truckers are scared to come because of COVID-19. It's all a joke. So if they want to push this stuff, they're going to have to do something to make the people accept it. And this is how they put the problem reaction solution the only way to get people to move to it is they're going to have to do something like break down the supply chain so that something can be ushered in to solve that problem. But the people at that point will be so hungry and they'll be 
begging to have this come in. And that's what they want. They want the people to beg for these technologies that are already here. And we're just kind of a little waiting game at this point to let, let the natural course run out. And that's where we're going to end up moving. The, the paintings on the wall, if you're not paying attention and, and listening, then you're going to get lost and stuck. Like a lot of uh, I reported on this, a lot of the, the uh, new technologies come out. McDonald's being replaced with their cashier systems. Uh, and people, all the people see is they're losing their job. They don't realize, wait a minute, if I went to school and, and learned a little bit about the AI, which it can, you can get a certificate in as little as six months, and you can go to program those same machines you just lost your job to, instead you're making 50 to $75 an hour. Uh, and I think this, this happens a lot where new technology comes out and it replaces a lot of jobs, but the people sit there and sob for two or three years and they think to themselves, man, I lost a really good job, I'm, I'm on unemployment, I don't know what to do. Or you could go to school, you could get a little better education, and then you could go out and get a job making triple to quadruple what you were making. So you always got to stay ahead if you want to succeed. I didn't know that my whole life. I was always stuck. Uh, I never had any education regarding money. I, I never really looked at the world. I, I just kind of going along as, as asleep. And since I have, my, not only has my whole world changed, but we've been able to help bring a lot of other people along with us. And... That's that's where my heart is. I, I love helping people. And that's damn it. That's what we do. <laughs> uh, OK. And when you're talking about we is uh, does this refer to your group, the group that you're also part of, which is a group of remote viewers? Is that the group you're talking about or is this another group of we? So, like I said, my company that I had a couple of years ago, I ended it. Uh, we have a silent partner. We have uh, a couple other partners. Silent partner is just a, a funder for the for the company itself. But the we have I have a very good friend of of men that originally came in our group, and, uh, and we've been able to drive up to. Uh, and he lives in Tennessee and meet him and talk with him and uh, give him a, a few. He guy can remote view. He's pretty good at it. He's he's uh, he doesn't get everything, but he gets some stuff. And just to have that and to have a uh, somebody that's also great with a computer and documenting information, and uh, he helps with our Patreon that we have. Uh, and so we got together, and three, was, well, there's three of us, and then you have the, our partner, but uh, that runs what's called the crypto agenda. Uh, and crypto is not crypto in the world of cryptocurrency. I think people get it misconstrued. Actually, have right here, <laughs> crypto, this is the uh, actual dictionary definition. Uh, a person having a secret allegiance to a political creed, especially communism. So when you hear the word crypto, we do we, we are our company is the cryptocurrency agenda. Uh, and when you get a special education and you're hearing words have a meaning, you need to really pay attention to what those things mean. Um, it's not my company. I work for the crypto agenda. I am. Uh, I get paid a check just like everybody else. Uh, so if, if we get 50 people coming, we get 100 people, we get 1,000 people. It doesn't help me uh, any any extra. Uh, I'm really I'm I'm there because it's my passion. That's what I love to do, and I want to have enough of a track record at some point in three to five to ten years that we can look back on. We have a a producer from Hollywood that in contact me about a month ago and said he was interested he so he was handed a script and it has to do with remote viewing and they said they were looking for someone that is a real remote viewer they don't just want so guy came in our group he's been paying attention i'm not saying there's anything that's going to come from this but i, I just find that it's, it's fascinating that some of this is slowly slowly coming out and becoming a socially acceptable thing and i think people i think everybody has the, the same abilities. I just don't think people have the time to focus on themselves long enough to actually figure out that we all are the same. Sure. Um, well, we all have those talents, but, uh, you know, real talent and uh, sort of skill in these areas gets developed over time, obviously. Well, but there's a lot of people that probably uh, a lot of young people coming in that may be doing this and not broadcasting it as well. So 
uh, there, there are a lot of uh, remote viewers out there and people, you know, the word about remote viewing is, is really worldwide and it's been out there for a good while now. Uh, so you said you, you started out looking at Cliff High. Do you look at his predictions or any of his uh, sort of crypto recommendations, I guess, or do you just pretty much fly on your own? I, I'm like an eagle. I fly solo. I, I when I originally was looking, he popped into my YouTube thing. I clicked on. I've watched a couple of his videos. The, the, I'm, and I'm not dissing Cliff at all because I really do like him. Uh, but when he talks, I don't understand a goddamn thing he says. Uh, and he uh, he's 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 very intelligent. He's very sharp, and he gets he does get some good stuff. But when he's talking. I just don't understand what he's so I don't even do it. But uh, no, I, I do all my own research and I put out a monthly report. I gather all the good stuff. I look at it. I literally spend 15 to 20 hours a day in this office. And that's what I do. Unless I have my children with me, which is every other week. Uh, I, uh, I focus strictly on our members and, and helping people. Um, you say you put out a report. So where do people get your report? Uh, so in that six coins to six million dollars uh, for you guys, that's pretty special. Um, it, it has the link to the public group in that report if they want to come. It also has a link to the Patreon. Now, there isn't a whole lot of action on Patreon because it's kind of like text messaging. Text messaging is such an old technology it's it's like picking up i don't even pick up the phone to call people anymore because it's not a good way to communicate it's, it's old and it's kind of outdated unless i absolutely have to but telegram there's so much more you can do it's so much quicker faster convenient it's easier um but the information is in that six coin it's a six million dollars uh everything is put into a private group on telegram you have the public group which is my personal group has nothing to do with crypto agenda and then you have the uh, uh, private groups on there that as I go through the day, maybe I'll get something. I immediately take what I get and I put that in what's called the hidden agenda. It's the report group. And then there's a questions and answers for the report group. So when I release that report once a month through the crypto agenda, uh, they can ask questions regarding stuff that I got to help better clarify different topics. I, I assume that those cost money, The uh, these private groups. Is that right? Private, group, private groups, there's two. There's a uh, news and occasional trades, I believe. Um, and then there's a report group. And yes, they both cost money. Okay. And do you want to say how much or not? Um, it, people can go check it out if they're interested. And if they're not, I would suggest coming into the private group, or sorry, not private, the public group. And there's, 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 there's enough stuff in there that I think people are going to get what they need without having to go private. I'm not, I'm not doing this to push money. I, I don't, I don't, it's not why I'm here. I wanted to spread the message about what's happening. I want people to see what's coming so that they can protect themselves because there's all kinds of people like my, my father, he's stuck in the, the 90s and he's a very sharp, intelligent guy. He's, he's one of the top doctors out there, but he's so stuck. And, you know, silver and gold is a great thing, but there's, there's, there's a new wave that's coming and a lot of, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of multi-billion dollar players coming into this with, if it's not worse, then why would the Fed be creating this? So people just need to look at it. And I think if, if they can get a, a little bit of an education on it, that it's going to save them in the long run. Uh, I, I, I think a lot of people are just going to wake up one day and, and their, their bank account could be at zero or they're going to be pushed into this this uh, this Fed Fed now or Amer whatever they call it, the, the digital dollar. But there's also that digital dollar is going to be riding alongside of a whole bunch of other cryptocurrencies that they can't defraud. They are being regulated somewhat. There's some of them that are called decentralized. They can't touch at all. They can't get rid of them if they wanted to. The only way to get rid of them is you have to shut down the Internet worldwide <laughs> and they're legal. Uh, so I think it's going to be a big way to help the people in the upcoming months and years to come. Okay. Now, in terms of your 
future takes on on the next few months, even in the election, you know, because you're getting some information coming at you, I assume. Do you want to talk about any of that here? I don't follow the political sort of it at all. I, Trump's Trump's not going anywhere. Um, he's he's going to be here for another four year term. Um, the the infrastructure, the, the collapse in the economy, all him, the treasury, um, the they're all, all the meats. They're they're pushing a uh, lab grown meat, future meats and beyond meats. Bill Gates is one of the owners. Uh, and this this stuff isn't. It's not a secret. It's just not publicly talked about. And you really you just gotta pay attention. I don't have anything political for you, Carrie. And I have an appointment here at six o'clock, but. Uh, okay, well, that's all good. Uh, now, do you want to take, I, I, is it, do you mean you have to go right away or do you want to take any questions from the chat? I'll happy to take a few questions uh, if they're interested. But once again, that's what the public group's for. They can come in there and, and they can ask. And God forbid, I don't have the answer to something. There's tons of very smart people in there that are willing to help. Okay, and this paper that, that we're going to put out there has a link to the public group, how to join and that sort of thing, right? Yes, it does. It's, it's very simple. So you download iOS or Apple on your phone or your, or your computer desktop, and it, you put in your email. It's not going to send you anything. It's, it doesn't spam you like a lot of other stuff. Right. Um, and um, it's, it's pretty. Okay, very good. So in terms of the questions, there's someone asking, I think it's a good question because there's a lot of talk about this stuff, Nisara and Gusara. Uh, mm -hmm. And what do you think about those terms and what they mean and whether that is going to have any meaning in the future? I think uh, I think maybe 25 percent of it uh, with Nasara might take place. Uh, the rest of it, I think, is just disinformation. Um, we, we have some articles we put out on it that's in the group to recite that to you on the spot. I can't do it. Okay, uh, now someone wants to know, you're aware they're going to roll out vaccines. Uh, do you have any thoughts about that? And are you going to get vaccinated? And are you allowing your child to be vaccinated? My whole family is exempt. Uh, we've never had a vaccination, never will. And if, if somebody wants to come give me one, they're going to get a bullet between the eyebrows. Um, no, I don't have much to say about it. Um, and if I do, that's probably better, best to be kept private in the conversation. Okay, and that is because you feel that you might be in danger if you you see say what you're you're seeing in the future with that. Well, Carrie, there's a lot of uh, people that are whistleblowers, and I've seen maybe ten percent of those over the last twenty years that, that I've been around. That if they really if there really is a real whistleblower and they come out and they say something, the feed on either the YouTube or the internet radio show or the just whatever they're doing is cut. The information scrubbed from the internet. And the next day, that person ends up appearing as a suicide in the newspaper. So I, I, I know that you have value. You see value in what we're doing, or you wouldn't have invited me back on. But the, I, I don't think putting me on the spot, even though it's someone else's question, is a place where I really want to be. I don't think that's super uh, not interesting. No worries. All you have to do is say, you know, uh, you, you don't want to disclose that at this time. Uh, yep. And you're, you know, you're perfectly um, free to do that. Uh, do you do you know who Catherine Austin Fitz is? And uh, do you have any insight as to why she's she's uh, negative on crypto? Any no, idea on that? That's a question I in the chat. If somebody's negative in crypto, it's because they haven't done their homework. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. So is Gates big into crypto? I don't know. I don't know Gates. Uh, I could go off based off well, of... I meant, you know, it'd be in the news if he was, I would assume. I assume the news is full of gar... I mean, it's crap. I don't listen to anything that the news puts out. Well, you, I think you do, actually, because you've been quoting some of the stuff, uh, you know, large companies getting into this, getting into that. There are trickles of information coming out as to what these people are doing. For example, we know Gates is developing a vaccine, like, very aggressively. So if he was into cryptos, it may be leaked out. Uh, because the news is not all fake. There's, uh, there are bits and pieces of truth, and it's surrounded by a lot of, uh, lot of lies. So 
Uh, just wondered if you had any thought on that, but if not, we'll move on. I'm just looking for some other questions quick, quickly. Um, so it, I guess that's it. Do you, uh, so your thought is the latest we're going to make that transition over to cryptos would be, you said 1221, if I got it correct, right? By the end of 2021, that's with at least the treasury. That's not the rest of the crypto market. The rest of the cryptocurrency market, worst case is 2027. And the IMF has talked about that, Christina Lagarde, and a the financial recovery that's coming. And since we already know that they're working with the central banks and what they're doing behind the scenes, what is that financial recovery? It's not cash. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ben. Thank you for the report you're sharing with my viewers. And again, this will be linked on my website and on the page uh, that you know your interview will reside on. Uh, I'll also make it available for people that are, I guess, not subscribers. So we'll put it there. And if you want to subscribe and watch the video, you can do that after we get off the air here. If you joined us late or you haven't, you know, for those who haven't seen it yet. So Thank you again for being here. And uh, any any last parting words? No, I am. I'm sorry we had some trouble in the beginning, but the uh, no worries <laughs> between our stuff and then the. Uh, but uh, no, I very much appreciate coming on, and, and I was really looking forward to having some things, some topics to talk about, uh, and and put that report out. It take, took a couple of weeks to make that for your, your viewers. I think it's really important that they, they see it, at least have some sort of a basis to, they can start with and look into, you can very easily type in Stellar or VeChain and you're gonna get to see for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Look, look into it on your own and find out. Uh, I'm very thankful and grateful to have you and be part of the show and be able to serve uh, the people watching. Uh, no, uh, thank you for allowing me to talk and we'll talk later. All right. Very good. You take care. Bye bye. OK, everyone. So that is is really uh, I think a fascinating Ben has always got great stuff to, to bring to the table and so we appreciate that uh, so I want to say that a lot of people don't understand that this show due to censorship on YouTube again and being demonetized uh, my shows are going to be removed from YouTube right after the end of this broadcast and then re-uploaded for the uh, viewing of of my uh, members only. So that takes time. So if you're a member and you're watching or from hopefully the members will already be able to figure this out. But a lot of people are having trouble kind of understanding what we've done and why we're doing it the way we're doing it. So it, it takes a couple hours to upload sometimes. It depends on the editing. If there's problems with the video, then I have to fix it in the editing. So I edit it right after it gets uh we close this down here today and then i will re-upload it so there's a few hours uh that it takes to do that so i hope you understand the process and stick with us uh it, it's worth it tomorrow we're gonna have robert o young talking about the model the virus model and what's wrong with it that seems to be motivating the entire world so Hope you'll tune in for that and please do uh, consider joining us and becoming a member. It's very inexpensive, $3 a month, and that is less than a latte. So uh, I hope you're motivated to support Project Camelot and come on board and we will continue to have fascinating shows every week. All right, take care. Bye-bye.